the next day it came on very very strong um, very dizzy chest got a little bit tight had a couple of chest pains and shooting pains which really really worried me What's up guys, Derek, morepolicemortage.com. Today we are going to be reacting to Lewis Young. What happened to my heart? If you don't remember, Lewis is a phenom fitness model, essentially. The guy has been featured in a Natty or Not on my channel and is blowing up on Instagram right now. He is a uh, you know acrobatic slash fitness fucking fiend and he uh, looks sick, perpetually shredded out of his goddamn mind. Year round, 365, 24-7. So, in this video, something happened to his heart. I've watched a piece of it. I ended up saving the rest to react to organically. And um, we're gonna kind of get into the overlap with you know heart complications, bodybuilding, shit like that. Put on 1.25 times speed. I'm gonna skip over. I might skip around a bit because it's a 15 minute video. And you all know what's gonna happen if I watch the whole thing. I'm gonna end up making this an hour video somehow. My name is Lewis Young and welcome to another YouTube video. Today, a little bit different. Um, I've had a lot of questions about what was going on with my heart and health complications that I have mentioned on my Instagram. Sorry about that. Um, on my Instagram over the last few weeks. Um, firstly, I'm feeling much better now. So as a lot of you know, I've just been to Santorini. So obviously I'm feeling much better. Um, so that's where it started about three years ago when I was at home. I was having a pretty chill evening. And all of a sudden I got very tight chest. I was getting chest pains, dizziness, and it was an immediate cause for concern. Um, so, at the time, no idea what was happening. 999, straight away, no hesitation. Paramedics came out, they were great. And they basically asked me a few questions. They did ECG at my house at the time. Um, obviously blood pressure, heart rate, all of that. So if you don't know what an ECG is, it is a electrocardiogram. It is different from an echo, which is imaging of your actual heart. The uh, electrocardiogram is to assess your um, heartbeat and the rhythm and assess if you have any kind of arrhythmias or anything like that. So by showing like the electrical activity of the heart, you can kind of dial in um, or at least narrow down what might be problematic and kind of you know decide if subsequent imaging and or some sort of uh, additional screening is warranted and you know if you're good to go you know there is very basic uh determinations that can be made by this kind of like preliminary test on uh heart function um they did another ecg in the ambulance on the way to hospital and in the ambulance they actually diagnosed me with atrial fibrillation um, so, at the time, initially, I was, I didn't know what it was, uh, I was quite scared, quite worried, and at the time they said, not to worry, shouldn't be an issue, nothing to worry about, it's quite common in athletes and people that train a lot. Okay, so atrial fibrillation, this is a, you know, pretty fucking scary thing, it's where your heart is beating irregularly, you know, normally you'd have a very consistent, dun dun, dun dun. Dun dun. Whereas with AFib, it might be like ba -ba 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 -ba, like a really weird, irregular rhythm. Here's like a graphical representation. I thought this was a really good video. Um, WebMD, so watch it here. With AFib, the upper chambers of the heart, the atria, fibrillate or quiver erratically. When this happens, blood doesn't get pumped into the ventricles like it should, and blood pools in the atria. Clots can form that break free and travel, causing a dangerous risk of stroke and an increased risk of heart failure. Many people with AFib don't have any symptoms at all, while others may have chest pain, a rapid heartbeat, or dizziness. While most AFib episodes aren't usually life-threatening, it can be part of an underlying heart condition. Your doctor may suggest treatments like medication to prevent blood clots or surgery to implant a pacemaker. So talk to your doctor about AFib and find out what you can do to stay heart healthy. So obviously, you know, very, very concerning. And this is something that, as you can imagine, a lot of people are going to be assuming, was this caused by anabolic steroids? Is this caused by excessive stimulant abuse? Is this caused by a genetic predisposition that went overlooked concurrently with anabolics and or, you know, stimulant use? 
Like this is the uh, kind of what we're gonna be getting into, but um, you know, obviously a highly concerning uh, thing going on here. Um, so and they said, we're just gonna take you to the hospital, run some more tests, got to the hospital, they did some blood tests and more ECGs, and they confirmed, yes, you have atrial fibrillation. They prescribed no medication, and they basically sent me on my way and said, if it blows up again, let us know. Three years passes by, nothing. Not, I don't even think about it. Um, every now and again, I feel a couple of palpitations. Um, so atrial fibrillation is, is basically an irregular heartbeat. So you kind of get like the regular bo bump, bo bump, and then you kind of get something a little bit obscure, a little bit different. Um, and then I go back to normal. And sometimes I would, this would happen and I would feel it, but that would literally be it. I'd just feel like a couple of palpitations and carry on with my day. Um, then a couple of weeks ago, I felt, I felt a little bit kind of drowsy, a bit low energy, low mood, but the whole week, but I was like, right, I'm just, maybe I'm overdoing it, just gonna crack on. I rocked up to the gym. Granted, I had had a pre-workout before I left at my house, and then I'd had a pump pre-workout when I arrived at the gym. I'm not sure if you can hear the seagulls outside, but they're making some really odd noises. Um, anyway, so, at the time, I thought the pump pre-workout was a non-stim. It turns out the pump pre-workout actually had more caffeine than my pre-workout. So on that day alone, on that day just before that workout, I had had 450 milligrams of caffeine plus all the other stimulants and everything else that you regularly find in a pre-workout. So again, he's on 450 milligrams caffeine, if I heard that correctly, correctly plus other stimulants that are included in these formulas. Now, is that generally going to be an amount that is problematic for anyone? Probably not. You know, there's a reason why most people are totally fine when they take pre-workouts and why most people who do dumb shit even on TikTok end up surviving and being fine and not having any notable issues. Um, you know, the tolerable limits of caffeine are quite high. Some of these other, you know, random, more obscure stimulants um, it's a bit up in the air on that when they're used concurrently with caffeine, but in general, like of course there is contraindications on the back and warnings on the back of supplement bottles for a reason. If you have a predisposition, a genetic heart condition, if you have, uh, you're on other medications, this kind of shit, you know, you know, talk with your doctor before you use a supplement. Like that stuff is on the label and a lot of people just overlook it entirely. They're like, whatever, fuck. You know, it's like reading through like, I don't know, like when you upgrade your iTunes and then there's like a fucking mile long contract that you have to, no one reads through and you just click agree and you just go through it. I guess a, sub, a supplement's not a mile long contract, but it's just one of those things people just like don't look at. And, uh, but it's actually important, you know, if you didn't know, like having a lot of stimulants, for example, big fucking deal. If you have atrial fibrillation, probably not something you want to be doing. Like even in like one pre-workout, like he's talking about having, he doubled up essentially, like even having one at like a topped out dose, like probably something you should be thinking twice about, or, you know, I guess maybe he got a stamp of approval, approval from his doctor or whatever. Um, but again, especially when he's concurrently with anabolics, you know, quite fucking sketchy. And um, again, is, you know, we see time and time again, I believe that a lot of the, you know, deaths in bodybuilding are the result of polypharmacy. I don't think it's the result of just using gear or it's just using this. And yeah, sure, in some cases it could be, but oftentimes it is the combination of um, heavy adrenergic stimulants, a um, bunch of fucking caffeine, you know, anabolic steroids, growth hormone, like whatever it is, they're usually a cumulative thing and it can lead to a compounding net detrimental impact um, in a cardiovascular context, even to individuals who are totally fine. For an individual with a genetic predisposition though, which presumably he fucking has, you know, extra, extra caution should be taken. And it's one of those things again, where I highlight the importance of getting high quality diagnostics before you start gear. Everyone just barely, no one even gets blood work, let alone actual high quality diagnostics. It's one thing to get your bloods done, which is like the bare fucking minimum, but above and beyond that, you should ideally be getting heart morphology and function checked, I would advise before running this shit, you know, getting like preliminary proactive organ imaging to assess function. This is the kind of shit that will determine how well you might be able to tolerate exogenous hormones and or, you know, stimulants and shit like that. You know, things like clenbuterol, things that are used in the bodybuilding world are not necessarily like fine just because they're stimulants. They can cause 
severe exacerbation of stuff like this, you know, even more so than fucking gear in some circumstances. And again, when you get into the morphological changes that occur when you use exogenous AAS, um, left ventricular hypertrophy, the actual cardiac remodeling that's occurring, this kind of stuff is going to make it far more fucking difficult to survive using compounds, you know, anabolics and shit, when you already have a predisposition to like a really irregular heartbeat. So there was a lot going on for my body and I felt completely fine. And to be honest, this isn't something out of the ordinary. So sometimes I would normally, for the last few years, I've had pre-workout pretty much every time I trained, but normally just kind of like one serving, sometimes a half serving. Um, so this wasn't too much out of the ordinary. And then I was just chilling and I uh, got up to fill my flask with water, sat back down, then all of a sudden I felt so dizzy. Um, like I was going to pass out. So I, was, I just said, I was with my friend Floris and Peter at the time. I said, guys, I'm feeling a bit odd. I'm just going to sit here for a second. I'm sure it will pass. Uh now, the fact that he's saying he's feeling this way is obviously concerning because, you know, despite the fact that AFib is not in general, like life threatening for most individuals and can be like pretty easily managed with, you know, certain lifestyle changes, avoiding certain, you know, drugs and shit like that maintaining proper electrolyte balance if you end up in a situation where you're like where he is like this is literally like a warning sign that you're not getting oxygenated um blood to actual like critical fucking organs in the body like if you have like think of the oxygen carrying capacity of your blood and it being pumped around the body by your heart like this is literally what pushes the shit to your brain to your fucking organs to everything that is responsible for all physiologic functions and if you're like literally essentially like borderline passing out or you feel like extremely lethargic and fatigued all of a sudden out of nowhere, like that's a sign that you're probably not getting oxygen to areas that you need it to get to, which probably indicates upstream to that, that your heart is not functioning well and you may indeed have some sort of like immediate medical emergency going on where you have, you know, pooling, like who fucking knows? Um. Do you like my, uh, my uh, Lola tea uh, mug? So yeah, I thought it was gonna pass. I was like, right, I'm just gonna chill for a second and then we'll crack on. About 45 minutes later, I was lying on the floor in the studio, still feeling exactly the same, really dizzy. Like, no way I could train. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to walk um, that dizzy. I contacted my coach. Uh, he suggested that might be due to um, my, I might need some sugar. Um, so we tried this, that didn't work. And then um, I was like, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna head home. I called Sav, and I said to Sav, I'm feeling a bit weird. Uh, I feel really really dizzy. Do you mind coming to meet me? So bless her, she walked all the way to the gym, and she walked me home. Uh, and then it just stayed. It didn't go away. I was dizzy for the rest of the evening. Uh, so we called 111. They ran me through a series of questions and they said, we need you to go to the hospital. What's the difference between 999 and 111? It's like, what countries use 911? I thought that was like the main thing. Um, so I went to the hospital, more blood tests, more ECGs. Um, and at the time, the ECG I had had, it didn't show atrial fibrillation as present, but it, doesn't mean it's not there anymore. It means, because obviously atrial fibrillation, it's not happening all the time. It just happens, I mean, it will happen and then it'll go back to normal and then it can be normal then it can happen again. So unless it's happening at the time where you actually take the ECG, you might not recognize that it's there. Um, that's why all of the, like the Apple Watch and the Aura Ring and all these kind of things that can like continuously measure, measure your heart and what it's doing can be very useful. Yes, yeah, that's a good point. Having uh, things on hand and tools to track metrics and whatnot to assess if there anything that is uh you know kind of going on a downward spiral and it's getting you know worse is there you know some sort of thing going on while i'm sleeping is there something you know is exercise causing massive fluctuations in you know rhythm like what like what is exacerbating the issue if anything and tracking longitudinal data to get a better assessment of if your condition is indeed worsening staying the same getting better like whatever it is um definitely a good point on that um, so yeah, so we, we, we left the, we was at A&E for about six hours and eventually they said, there's not really much that we can put our finger on. Um, and they sent me home. Um, and then it was about, 
a week later and well, between hit between that time and a week later a lot happened i was dizzy the entire time i was probably dizzy for about 10 days if not more i mean like the whole time there was no like drop off and i it got sometimes it was kind of bearable and it was okay and i could cope other times it was just it would just take over and um sav's dad and partner came down to visit when they arrived that morning i was fine when they arrived i was fine i was like hey how you doing we were chatting everything was good and then we wandered into town we sat down we had lunch and after i ordered the food it just came full on and obviously I was trying to catch up and i was talking i couldn't concentrate on what they were saying um and i felt really dizzy i said to sav i was like i'm like i've got to go home um so unfortunately i had to leave them there sav walked me home again and the i took my food to take away got home just chilled okay the next day it came on very very strong um very dizzy chest got a little bit tight had a couple of chest pains and shooting pains which really really worried me um it was probably the worst um kind of episode if you can call it an episode at that point um so it's called 999 um they sent someone out they did uh tests at the house and they said We're gonna, we want to take you in more blood tests more ecgs um and then they they gave me a, a medicine a tablet a medication at the hospital um i can't remember exactly what it was called um but it was only to help with the dizziness after i left that time i was like right i need an answer so we booked a an appointment with a private cardiologist so this is someone that specializes in the heart um and so i went to see him i got there by this point it was starting to get better and then he sat me down he asked me a bunch of questions um and he said that my there's things that happen in in my body that have seemed to triggered the atrial fibrillation yeah so there's definitely it was probably about to elaborate but things like stress things like lack of sleep things can kind of like bring it on and uh definitely exacerbate it but again the fact that it's present to begin with in like a consistent way is uh very very worrying obviously and kind of uh circles back to the well i guess realistically if he hasn't had it for three years he might have thought oh it's just transient you know it's nothing to worry about hasn't happened forever it's fine so you know he'd use whatever he wanted to use use you know stimulant pre-workouts whatever it is and he's been unfazed for this long so i imagine what kind of like this situation i imagine would have a more highly significant impact on what his decision making processes for what compounds he's going to expose himself to moving forward and it also could have kind of paired up with a series of anxiety attacks um this wasn't fun <laughs> not at all and it, it it was very very worrying um so at the at this period of time i had a lot on my plate i've got a lot going on um kind of i am maybe kind of burning the candle at both ends so to speak yeah this guy posts a lot dude like he's uh very active on social media on instagram on tiktok i believe too like i even mentioned in the natty or not like I post a fucking lot and like I know how hard it is and seeing his frequency of output and the fact that a lot of it is like training content and shit too as well as like trying to I'm pretty sure he does coaching and like I don't know like a bunch of other shit he's like a model he does like a million different things so you can imagine he's probably spread pretty thin and probably underslept you know probably you know inducing situations that are not too favorable for maintaining high quality you know cardiac function especially with a pre-existing cardiovascular issue essentially so you know using stimulants to stay awake or get you know dialed in for the gym whilst being sleep deprived whilst being potentially on anabolics whilst being you know like so much fucking shit on top of and stressed you know spread super thin on business stuff it all adds up and yeah so for those of you that are asking kind of a flare-up of atrial fibrillation um, paired with anxiety. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly kind of which part was which, um, but it seems to, the, sorry, the doctor actually recommended that I take a week and just relax, which worked out perfectly because we planned to go away for a week. Um, so as long as he, after he said that I'm safe to fly, safe to travel, I was like, okay, cool. Go away for a week, shut off, just relax, enjoy and it seems to have somewhat resolved itself i'm thinking because maybe i started to relax a little bit more and my body is slowly going back to normal but yeah 
obviously I was worried. But I just thought I'd jump on here, talk to you guys a little bit, explain a little bit. And I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of you. I've never had so many messages in such a short period of time. Um, just people, you guys, hope you're okay, like worried about me, asking what's happened. Um, my coach was brilliant, he was amazing. Before I saw the cardiologist, I jumped on a call with him. I spoke him. I, I spoke through everything with him and he basically like, diagnosed me and said pretty much what the cardiologist said before I went to see the cardiologist, which could have saved me like 200 quid. <laughs> I should have just stopped there. Um, so yeah, Callum was great, you guys were great. All of my friends, family, obviously amazing. And Sav, I've just got to say like a massive thank you to Sav because she was incredible. She was literally kind of looking after me she was up in the middle of the night with me when I couldn't get to sleep and I was having these really like, intense dizzy spells. Um, she was knackered and she was sitting like three, four hours just staying awake with me. She's like, I'm lying on the sofa, she's making me food, she's helping me with my work. She's literally helped me walk a couple of times. She's left her family to walk me back. She's downstairs, I'm not sure if she can hear me, but she's been incredible. All of you guys have been incredible. So I hope that shines, uh, I hope that helps you understand a little bit more what I was going through uh, over the last couple of weeks. I'm feeling much better now. So I think we're in the clear, but yeah, that's it. And on top of this, I want you guys to hold me to this because my plan from now on is to upload one YouTube video every single day for as long as I can. There's no talk about like any kind of intervention to like avoid this again besides staying stress-free. Obviously there might be a couple of days where I'm too busy to do it, but I'm gonna try one video a day. So, that's it. You guys can see if I actually stick to that. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your concern. Thank you for all the messages. Um, if you're not following me, following me on Instagram, check out my Instagram, lewisyoung underscore. If you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, please subscribe. There's gonna be a lot of content coming. Okay, well, I guess that is it for the uh, atrial fibrillation discussion. Um, things that I can think of off the top of my head, making sure your electrolytes are balanced. Um, you know, this is not like really my forte. I'm just, to me, like the first thing I would be thinking is getting subsequent cardiac imaging and getting, you know, an assessment if, like again, I'm, I'm just speculating what this guy does. He's mentioned how he uses, you know, stimulants quite frequently. And, you know, at relatively high dosages, I guess, you know, depending on how high you think high is. But in general, like if I had AFib, even if it was transient, like I'd be, you know, very much thinking twice about the ingestion of pre-workout products. Like there's a reason why the warning labels exist. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that for individuals who are, you know, going into a bodybuilding lifestyle, whether it's, you know, in general, you know, may involve some exogenous, uh, you know, stuff, shit that is going to affect your heart. You know, stimulants have a significant impact on cardiac function, adrenergic signaling, especially the electrical impulses that kind of regulate how the shit sort of works. A lot of this stuff is going to have a very heavy impact on your heart function. And if you already have a pre-existing cardiovascular condition with irregular heartbeats, you can just imagine that extra, you know, signaling and heightening your, you know, fucking brain um, neurotransmitters and whatnot are going to be overloading you in some capacity potentially. Like, uh, you know, it's already sketchy enough. Some of the pre-workouts out there that are, you know, loading you up with, like, again, I'm pretty sure he's, uh, he doesn't take any crazy fucking, you know, stimulant ridden, like gray area pre-workouts or anything, but still taking anything when you have like a very, very irregular heartbeat is obviously, you know, kind of sketchy alongside the anabolics that may or may not be in play here. Um, I would definitely be circling back and really like re-evaluating the ingestion of certain compounds. And this is more of a warning for other individuals who are getting into this kind of lifestyle. Like this is the kind of thing you may not see coming. Like this, he could have had a much worse outcome. It's very fortunate that nothing bad came from this. Um, it's great that he has a diagnosis and he probably has a lot of insight on what to do as far as a harm reduction perspective moving forward. And also a huge kudos to him for being transparent about this video. He could have easily fucking kept it to himself, um, not put it out there, not told anybody about it, you know, made it seem like, you know, nothing's wrong with him, which is what a lot of fucking people do um, because they, you know, don't necessarily want to put it out there. They don't think it, you know, really reflects well on um, them as a, you know, beacon of fucking health. You know, these guys essentially are fitness influencers at the end of the day. And when you do not come across as the epitome of health, 
it does not necessarily like help your brand necessarily. So kudos to him for being like super, super transparent on that. And um, hopefully, you know, everything stays in the clear for him moving forward. But again, warning for other individuals getting into bodybuilding, getting pre exposure, high quality diagnostics is not something to fuck around and mess with. This is something to actually take seriously and spend the money on. If you're willing to spend, you know, 500 to $1,000 on a fucking cycle, you should be, and you know, pre-workouts and whatever else you're gonna spend your money on, like you should be taking the time to get a elaborate blood test, ideally very basic imaging, um, an ECG would be good as well. Like this kind of stuff is paramount in my opinion. Like this is the kind of thing you will not get a baseline reading of again once you've exposed yourself to these compounds. I'm not saying he is or he isn't on the compounds, I'm just saying if you're gonna be using anabolics and shit like that, once you're on them, you do not have baseline readings you can defer back to to see what kind of like been fucked up if you encounter an issue. This is where you need baseline assessments of exactly where you're at as a natural. So then if you have an issue in the future, you can make an assessment of where the disparity is, what went wrong, can you get back to a state that is otherwise healthy, were you healthy to begin with, should you have been exposing yourself to this shit, should you avoid it entirely, that's the kind of thing you can predict with far greater accuracy if you do the right thing first and spend a little bit of money. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one, hopefully you learned something, hopefully uh, Lewis ends up uh, you know, being fine, this is just a transient event that was induced by, who knows, lack of sleep, a bunch of stims, a bunch of shit that um, it was just a one-off thing, but um, yeah, be careful, guys. That's it. So thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, not bitchy, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my HRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. It's where you can get access to high-quality diagnostics for blood work, as well as high-quality oversight from doctors who know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to getting the right organ imaging done, getting the right interpretations of your labs and high quality assessments of your health status and where you may have deficiencies or imbalances that require addressing and very, very significant and useful oversight when it comes to harm reduction with this kind of shit. Um, and yeah, anything else I'm associated with, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, Pre-Workout Formulas, Design Myself From Scratch, uh, recommended diet model for newbies getting into lifting, and anything else I'm associated with it is all down in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.